On a clear day, July 31st, a big wind ripped down the Threbbo Valley here in the Snowy Mountains. It tipped over cars. I was just hanging on. Made a policewoman fly. <laughs> it was a bit scary. <laughs> killed a pony. Broke her neck instantly. It was very sad. And burst the roof off Keith's house from the inside. I was walking through the kitchen and suddenly the whole front of the house, the windows came in and uh, managed to jump out of the way. And then a second later, the whole of the roof just took off. It makes you wonder, what kind of wind can do that? Keith would certainly like to know. And this is where the roof ended up, around about 500 metres from the house. Well, let's find out as we take a journey around the startling power of the wind. Now, if you're anything like me, when you sit down to watch the weather report at night... Uh, wind gusts up to around 60 kilometres per 90 hour. 90 kilometres per hour. Gusts around 110 kilometres per hour. You have no idea what all those wind speeds really mean. So, wheel out the wind machine and crank it up to 11. We're going to show you exactly what wind speed can do what. We've set up here a typical backyard and we'll see at what wind speed things start to go awry. Observing, we have wind damage expert Mark Edwards and from the bomb, Harold Richter. Let the wind blow! That's 20 k's. Now we're up to 60. It's amazing how overexcited you can get when it's not your own property. The dog kennel's gone a long way. Yeah, yeah. Poor dog. And believe it or not, at just 60 kilometres an hour, it's already all over. So 60 kilometre an hour winds, we would consider gale force winds, so it's something that happens fairly often around Australia. These sort of winds don't usually cause damage, uh, but as we saw in the simulation, in our backyard where we have light things with a reasonable sail area, uh, they can be pushed around like patio furniture, uh, it can overturn uh, trampolines. So a 60k wind is enough to wreak havoc on a modern yard, with flying debris maybe smashing a window. Crank it up now. Let's see what happens at 90. Okay. 90 kilometer an hour winds is broadly the threshold that we would or damaging winds. Of course, once you get to 90 k's, it's hard for an able-bodied person to walk around outside. And at that wind, the trampoline's now in the neighbour's place, and that dog kennel will tumble with the dog in it. So you might want to bring the dog inside too. So if a wind gust of 90 kilometres an hour is enough to knock me off my feet, how much wind does it take to lift a person off the ground altogether? So we have here one dog, one small child and me and we're going to see at what wind speed each of us becomes airborne. You ready? To deal with these higher speeds we've switched to an indoor vertical wind machine because it's safer and I suspect more fun. Here we go. And the dog's gone, much to the delight of my young co-flyer. Now, the small child. She's right off the ground at a wind speed of 120 kilometres an hour. Once you move up to 120 kilometres per hour, now things start to go wrong. You've reached the threshold of damage for older, more vulnerable homes. It also happens to be the threshold of damage for some garage doors on modern homes. As they're breached, the pressure of the wind can get into the garage, increasing the chance of losing your roof. The most important thing to understand about a wind's speed and its force is that it's not a linear relationship. 
For each doubling of the wind speed, the force goes up fourfold. In other words, what might seem like a small increase in wind speed delivers a massive lift in sheer power. And here I go, at 140 kilometres an hour, just 20 k's more than it took to lift a kid a third my weight. To be honest, this is sobering. I never imagined 140 kilometre winds capable of this. And these winds are in the ballpark of what drove through the Threadbow Valley on July 31st. We know because as it happened, a number of locals recorded it. Simon was driving at 90 kilometres an hour when he felt his car pushed from behind. And then the debris sort of started hitting the car. You must have been hanging onto the steering wheel for grim death. I was, yes, yep. Wind gusts well over 90 kilometres an hour were enough to push a car off the road. And a few were that day. But the gusts that struck this part of the valley were even stronger. It hit the house and the whole house shook and then you could hear it move away. And it was like, well, that was a really big one. So I came down and checked my weather station and yeah. sure enough, that's my new high standard, 187 k's. 187 kilometres an hour. Yeah. And that was the wind that was enough to make Keith's entire roof fly. Because once you've got to 180 k's, you have now exceeded the design wind speed for ordinary homes. So you're going to see widespread damage to older homes and significant damage to even modern structures that have benefited from current building regulations. We got the kids out and that was the main thing. Yeah. No one was hurt. So what caused such freak winds? Especially on a blue sky day. Even the locals used to mountain weather can't recall its like. In fact, it's so out of the box, it prompted our man from the Bureau to conduct some serious investigative meteorology on Keith's behalf, and he's ready to reveal all. So, Keith, Harold's been doing some excellent detective work for us. Right. Yeah, we did some investigative work. When we first heard what actually happened at your farm, it was Keith. surprising, especially the wind strength was surprising because yeah. it was effectively an event with a, a clear sky. There were a few clouds around, but it wasn't the classic setup where you had a, a big cyclone or a thunderstorm. So we started the investigation with this chart here. This is the actual chart hand drawn by Bureau meteorologists as the event unfolded. The thing to note here is this massive temperature difference. Sydney had shorts and t-shirt weather, it was 25 degrees, whereas Melbourne was 9 degrees only, right? So you had a temperature difference there between the two cities of 16 degrees. In short, we have really cold air over here, we have really warm air over here, and they're in fairly close proximity to each other. What that means overall is fairly strong winds. Temperature gradients are the most common cause of big winds responsible for what you and I know as cold fronts or southerly busters. The extreme temperature gradient, July 31st, caused an arc of powerful winds from WA right across to New South Wales. But here in the mountains that day, there was one extra extraordinary factor. And Threadbow Top Station recorded a maximum wind gust of 150 kilometres per hour. Normally, wind speeds are higher the higher you are in the sky, which is why Threadbow Top Station at 2,000 metres above sea level regularly gets strong winds. But this time, the winds were strongest in the valley. A mystery. Until Harold had a brainwave. Our aha moment was when we started to realise there was what we call a mountain wave. Yeah. So this is air that is forced over the mountain, doesn't want to go over the mountain, but it is forced over it and it starts to go up and down on the other side of the mountain. Unfamiliar here, mountain waves are a well-known phenomenon in the American Rockies. In certain conditions high in the sky, the air currents form big waves exactly like on the ocean. And sometimes the waves become so steep the mountains act like a reef and the waves actually break. Tumbling into the valleys, 
like a churning foam of wind. It breaks, it's a, like an ocean wave, it breaks, and when it breaks, uh, it can create very brief moments of very, very strong winds. In all Harold's years at the Bureau, never before has he heard a report in Australia of such a powerful breaking mountain wave. We're actually getting them. This is yeah. the first real case where we're getting those clear sky winds that head up there towards 200 kilometres an hour. So it is, yeah, it's a bit groundbreaking in that sense. Literally. Mm, <laughs> literally, yeah. Was it that strong? <laughs> Good on you, Keith. Black yeah. humour in the face of adversity. <laughs> <laughs> so if a wind gust of 180 kilometres an hour can do this, what kind of power do you get inside a tornado? If you'd asked me a year ago whether we get tornadoes in Australia, I'd have said no. That was before two tornadoes ripped past my house in the middle of the night. The wind woke me up. But that's nothing to the shocking awakening experienced by Karen Van Druten, nearby in the peaceful south of Sydney beach town of Kiama. Suddenly there was an, a god almighty explosion and of course being in the bed, the first thing I did was uh, pull the doona over my head and go into a fetal position and everything rained down on me and I was hanging on to whatever I could including um, hanging on with my knuckles into the mattress. The wind had removed her roof and three of her walls, leaving just half a wall and Karen still in her bed. I was as if I was sitting outside. It was a genuine Dorothy tornado. tornado without the red shoes. Or oh, well, probably my red shoes did fling up in it. Uh, there was enough that was flung up in it. The tornado that nearly carried Karen away was one of three to hit this area that night. The second, smaller tornado damaged houses around Jamboree. But it was the third one that was really scary, passing just south of my own home. I came to look at it the next day and I can tell you, it was jaw-dropping. This is 30 metre high forest around here. Well, there was nothing left above about 10 metres. Every branch broken off, every leaf gone, and the path was at least two to 300 metres wide. The swathe of destruction tracked 12 kilometres inland, just missing three big towns, but hitting this property, where Ross Friend sheltered his goats in a 2.6 tonne shipping container. And the wind picked it up there, threw it into that concrete telephone post up there and split it into four places. So the wind... With goats in it. With goats in it. With goats in it. Were they OK? Some of them were dead the next morning yeah. in the container. Others had to be put down. We put down 13 goats the next morning. Contrary to popular belief, not only does our land of Oz get full-blown tornadoes, they're surprisingly common. Last year, Australia was hit by 60 tornado events and they were all over. So what sort of wind speeds are we talking now? With the help of our forensic meteorologist, let's start with the weakest, the Jamboree tornado. This one we rated EF0, that's the weakest. The EF he's referring to is the international scale for rating tornadoes. EF0 already means winds can gust up to about 140 kilometres an hour. Mm. So it's really quite strong. Enough to lift me off the ground. Enough to lift you off the yeah. ground, that's right. The tornado that hit Kayama and removed most of Karen's bedroom was rated EF1. That means a top wind speed of around 180 kilometres an hour. And now to the big one. The last tornado had a path length that was at least three to four times as long as the Jamboree tornado. Mm. And uh, this one we rated uh, EF2. The top speeds are now 220 kilometres an hour. This is a speed where there's a serious threat to a lot of structures. And the wind pressure now of this tornado would be well over double of that of the weakest tornado. Remember, as wind speed doubles, its sheer power quadruples. This event was every bit as powerful as you'd find in Tornado Alley. 
great. So I was just missed by a US-sized tornado. You could see it that way, yes. So you're quite lucky that you can conduct this interview. Yeah. And if I was lucky to be able to conduct this interview, what about this man? Oh, stop, stop. Power line just went. This extraordinary video was taken last year near the town of Malwela on the Victoria, New South Wales border. It's coming for us. He's capturing part of a tornado outbreak that hammered local caravan parks and towns. These tornadoes were rated a staggering EF4. That means wind speeds of up to 300 kilometres an hour. It's taking the power lines down. Let's put that into perspective. This is an impact cannon, part of research by America's premier tornado science centre, the National Wind Institute. And this is what a regular plank of wood travelling at 300 kilometres an hour looks like. If I had any doubts about the power of increasing wind speed, they've been smashed. So, million dollar question, how come we got tornadoes here? It turns out you need three ingredients to make a tornado. First, you need a thunderstorm. Second, it needs to be extremely humid. Third, you need a rapid change in wind speed in the first kilometre above the ground, otherwise known as wind shear. Then this happens. The wind shear causes the air to begin to roll. This rolling wind is then sucked up into the thunderstorm and now it's vertical. You've got yourself a tornado, or several. The critical threshold for tornadoes is a wind shear greater than 40 kilometres an hour. Harold has discovered the wind shear the night of the Kayama tornadoes was a whopping 75 k's. We had nearly twice the value of the wind shear that we would associate with tornadoes for the Kayama event. So next time it's really humid and there's a wind shear above 40 kilometres an hour, I should go and stay at my dad's house. Yeah, there's <laughs> maybe better sleep at your dad's house. That's yeah. right, yep. OK. So what have we learned from this turbulent journey through the power of the wind? Well, if there's one thing that's clear, is that nowhere in Australia is immune. And while fortunately most of us will never be hit by a tornado or a breaking mountain wave, we will all at some stage be in the path of big winds. So the next time the weatherman comes on and says... Now, damaging wind with gusts around 110 kilometres per hour will develop tonight anywhere south of the Illawarra... With any luck, you'll have a better appreciation of what that really means. And you might just be more inclined to do what the SES says and secure your yard properly. 60k an hour winds again, but as you can see, this time we've put everything away or staked it down. Let it rip. And make sure you remember the dog kennel. Thank you, sir. You're good. <laughs> <laughs>